nothing in the rail fan community triggers debates or strong feelings as to who makes the better locomotive, GE or EMD. The answer isn't always clear, cut, and dry, and a lot depends on what factors are taken into consideration. I'm Railfan AC, and you're watching Trains in the 21st Century. Let's start off with a comparison of two similar models from both GE and EMD, the AC4400CW and the SD70 Mac. In the horsepower category, the AC44 has 4400 horsepower as opposed to the 4000 horsepower of the SD70 Mac. In starting tractive effort, the GE has 180,000 pounds as opposed to 175,500 pounds for EMD. Continuous tractive effort, the GE has 145,000 pounds versus 137,000 pounds for EMD. In the standard weight department, the EMD is a little bit beefier at 420,000 pounds versus the leaner AC44 at 412,000 pounds. Dynamic braking, the GE has 98,000 pounds worth versus 81,000 pounds for the EMD. They both factor out around 35% for all-weather adhesion, with the SD70 Mac being a little longer at 74 feet versus the 72 feet 2 inches of the AC4400. At a glance, GE seems to have a little bit of a lead over the EMD in the basics. The AC4400CW has higher tractive effort, horsepower, and dynamic braking ability than the Mac. Some additional comparisons are the fact that the AC4400 has one inverter per axle while the SD70 Mac has only one inverter per truck. What this means is that an inverter failure on an AC4400 will only cripple one axle while that same failure on a Mac will cripple the entire truck. This is said to be one reason that GE's AC units have a higher tractive effort than EMD's AC models. Well, not exactly. One could argue that the starting and continuous tractive efforts listed are strictly electrical ratings for the motors. It's said that the GE simply have more robust motors than EMD locomotives giving GE a slight advantage. An important side effect of this is that with one traction motor cut out, the GEs can still produce full horsepower. That means that they can continue on with their trip without any time loss, assuming that there isn't a ruling grade that requires the tractive effort provided by the missing axle. Furthermore, cutting out one axle on a GE locomotive isn't necessarily considered a safety defect by the FRA, so the locomotive doesn't have to be immediately routed to a shop for repairs, giving GE yet another advantage. With the EMD setup, a failed motor will result in the loss of almost half the horsepower produced by the locomotive impacting the train's running time, once again, giving the advantage to GE. On a GE, the wheel slip control is at the individual axle level while it's controlled at the truck level on EMD units. Individual axle control in a wheel slip control system is considered superior to control at the truck level only. This is one reason that GE AC units have a higher tractive effort than EMD AC models have. Of course, if you remember what we talked about in video T167, Norfolk Southern's 50 newest SD70 ACE models in the 1175 to 1224 number class have the individual axle control system, which is why NS classifies these 50 units as the SD70 IAC. There's a link in the description box and in the pinned comment to that video, just in case you missed it. The counter argument to what I just said could be debated about the value of one over the other since the proof is in the adhesion rating, which if you remember is 35% for both the AC4400 and the 70 Mac, which implies that both are equally effective at putting the horsepower to the rails, making this category a draw. The traction motor's cooling systems are a lot different on EMDs than on GEs. EMDs have a mechanical blower system that's driven directly by the engine. This means that the amount of cooling air supplied to the traction motors is dependent on the position of the throttle. And since the max amperage rating is based on 8 notches of operation, this reduces the amperage limits of EMD traction motors. You might remember in video T137 when I said this. 
DC Traction Motors also have a nasty reputation for burning themselves up at low speeds, making DC locomotives less than ideal at low speeds. Example, heavy coal trains on a grade. Now I was talking about DC motors as opposed to AC motors, so I'm wondering if any correlation and or causation. GE, on the other hand, uses separate AC motors that supply cooling air to the traction motors regardless of the throttle setting, which is one reason why GE units have a higher tractive effort and amperage limit than on EMD models. The argument could be that although the continuous ratings of the motors require a given amount of motor cooling air, the locomotive will be operating in notch 8 whenever the rating is critical to getting a train over the railroad. EMD probably designed the blowers to provide the required amount of air for that operation, so the fact that the blowers are mechanically driven rather than electrically could be called immaterial. GE selected electrically driven blowers mostly to improve fuel economy and to permit rapid replacement if ever there was a failure. The trade-off was a higher initial cost of the locomotive up front which could designate this category as another draw. EMD units up until the SD90 Mac had two cycle diesel engines while the GEs used four cycle engines which are said to be more fuel efficient. It said that the 6,000 horsepower four cycle H engine for the SD90 Mac had more cubic inches than the GE version on the AC6000 CW which may have resulted in better fuel efficiency and power for the 90 Mac when compared to the AC6000. That's always been the theoretical argument but it's often argued that EMD and GE have been neck and neck for fuel efficiency since the Dash 8 line was introduced making this category a draw. Of course, a comeback to that could be citing the dependency on cylinder head design, scavenging, and auxiliary losses. And given the ability of both builders to match the other in fuel efficiency, some would say it's a draw. But seeing that the 90 Mac outsold the 6000s by 400 to 317, I'm giving this round to EMD. EMD control systems seem to have an edge on GE with more advanced capabilities. The rollback mode of the SD90 Mac enables it to apply tractive effort and dynamic braking when starting on a hill to compensate for any backward roll and quickly get the locomotive moving in the right direction. The argument to that is that while that particular feature is nice to have, it doesn't really add to the bottom line. And since I believe that GE has developed a similar system, that makes this one a draw. On the other side of the coin, however, the troubleshooting capabilities of the microprocessor system are a different story. This does affect the bottom line by making maintenance easier which keeps locomotives out on the road instead of in the shop. I'm told that most shop foremen prefer the GE Micro for electrical troubleshooting given the advantage to GE. EMD's radial truck seems to be superior to GE's and has greatly reduced wheel and track wear. In fact, EMD's radial truck design is a big reason why the SD70 series locomotives were so successful. The radial truck reduces the weight transfer that occurs since the couplers are on a locomotive are attached to the frame. Therefore, the trucks are literally trying to get out from under the locomotive frame at times which can cause more wheel slip on a GE unit when compared to an EMD unit with the radial truck. The counterpunch to that claim is that GE closed the gap made by EMD's radial truck design with GE's own steerable truck. You can find GE self-steering trucks on railroads such as the CSX, Iowa Interstate, Kansas City Southern, and the Western New York and Pennsylvania's recent former CSX acquisitions. EMD introduced their low-weight transfer truck, the HTC, with the Dash 2 line. We talked about it briefly in video T176. There's a link to that video in the description box and in the pinned comment just in case you missed it. GE came along later with special trucks under the Dash 9s. Little known fact, it was actually the MLW that led the way with their DeFasco truck way back in the 1960s which was followed by the Alco Trimounts. We talked about the DeFasco truck briefly in video T190, link is in the description. GE redesigned their radial truck to address some of the maintenance problems and the new versions should perform as well as the EMD radial truck since both trucks are designed to do the same thing. So besides the fact that GE was behind EMD in timing, you could call this one a draw. The EMD Super Series Wheel Slip Control System that was introduced with the SD50 and GP60 is generally considered inferior to the GE Century Wheel Slip Correction System. The EMD system permits controlled wheel slip since this can actually increase tractive effort. However, this system wears the contours off of the wheels of the locomotive much more quickly than with the GE system. Therefore, the wheels on EMD units equipped with the Super Series system must be turned more frequently to ensure that the wheels wear down evenly. This is especially true if the locomotives are used in lugging service which is hard on the trucks and wheels. And now the contradiction. 
GE's micro-century system, which was introduced during the production of the Dash 8 line, is also designed around the concept of controlled creep, so there's no difference in the intent of the two systems. It's the standard system used on all new locomotives and has been offered as a retrofit on older locomotives. The GE system did not allow wheel creep according to the book How Diesel Electric Locomotives Work. However, some say that the book is wrong, citing that although the early Dash 8 designs didn't allow creep, GE developed a creep control system in the late 80s which has been applied to all of their microprocessor locomotives since. The rumor is that there is a retrofit kit for the older Dash 8s, with one now available for some types of Dash 7 GEs. So is the debate settled? Probably not. If there are any railroad workers watching, I'd like to know what you think. Do you corroborate what I said in this video, or dispute it? You're the real experts, and we'd all like to hear what you have to say. Or at least I would. For Trains 21, call me AC.